Holy she's sweet. Oh yeah. Are you someone who has a small shop and a limited amount of tools, but you need a workbench? I got you. I'm gonna build this workbench using only these three power tools, which most of you should have. Let's go. So for this build, I'm only going to use three tools, a drill, a circular saw, and a portable table saw. A lot of you guys request for me to build projects with less tools. Well, here you go. This thing's gonna be bomb proof and it should be a really, really, really solid rolling work table. With a shop this big, we're gonna need something that is mobile. So I've got a killer plan and we're only gonna use construction grade materials on this too. So eat your heart out DIY, let's go. So I said three tools and that's actually three power tools. Obviously I'm gonna need a couple other things in order to build this project, but none of them are gonna require power. I'm doing this intentfully because I want our projects to be more approachable for you guys. And I also wanna know, what are the projects you want to see with basic tools? So please don't complain if you see me with a speed square, a chisel, or some clamps, glue, that kind of stuff, because most of you guys probably have that. So let's get the build. First thing we're gonna do is break down our leg material. These are eight foot two by sixes, and there's a plan available if you wanna do this. I'm gonna rough saw them down a little bit oversized, glue them up so I can get the thickness that I want for the legs, and I'm just gonna use a speed square. Why would I use a miter saw? Because most students don't have one, and you'll love to see me struggle. Let's rip. I hate being on the floor. I do this because I love yens. All right, so now we're gonna glue these up, create a thicker leg profile here. Let's get a little bit more beef. And who doesn't like more beef? Oh yeah. So because all of these legs are the same size, I'm literally just gonna batch clamp them. I'm gonna batch clamp them all together at once. That way I don't have to pull out 72 different clamps because I don't even know where our clamps are. We just found this one set. And also just so you know, squiggles never swirls. There's no science behind it. Glue is glue. I like to write my name in it. So because I absolutely despise the round over on a two by four, <clears throat> we're gonna rip it off, square these up, give ourselves a nice uniform three inch board. These have been drying for a few hours because we're impatient children. Rip. Bottle glue there. Who put that there? I've got the rest of the lumber laid out here on the sawhorses. I'm making myself a rudimentary bench because I realize that if you're building this workbench, you may not have a workbench. That would kind of make sense, right? So we're going to square up the legs height wise, then we're going to cut our joinery, which is always fun. All right, so. Now we've got all of our legs cut to length, kind of. Now we're gonna mark out all of our joinery. So it's easier to lay everything out at once. And then you can use square. So we're going to make lap joints. So this thing is like rock solid. The lap joint will give it a shoulder in here and here to rest on. Multiple glue surfaces. It'll be much stronger than a pocket hole or just your standard face screw. It'll also look cleaner, which we like. So I'm gonna set the depth of my circular saw here to be the same, just a smidge inside the depth of the wood and then I'll clean it up with a chisel. Don't get upset that I'm using a chisel. Yes, it's a tool, but it's not a power tool. Real quick, before we continue on building out this badass bench, I want to take a second to thank this week's sponsor, Skillshare. For those of you that are not familiar with Skillshare, get yourself familiar. It's awesome. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of different courses and classes across like the most broad array of subjects that you can possibly think of. We've been using Skillshare as a team to learn for years, whether it's photography, videography, drafting, and drawing online with something like Fusion 360. Whatever you can think of, it's probably got a course on Skillshare. Currently, I'm taking the YouTube success class with Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Dude is a whiz and expert and is giving all of that juice out there on Skillshare, which is amazing. I love learning and getting better at what I'm doing, regardless of if I'm in the shop or if I'm outside of the shop, if it's in business, being a dad, being a husband, being a friend, whatever it is. Skillshare is awesome for pretty much everything I need in life. 
five. They're also awesome because they're giving the first thousand people to click the link in my description a free month to try out Skillshare. So what do you have to lose? You hit that link, you sign up, you try some things out, and you get better just like the rest of us around here who love Skillshare. Now, let's get better at building and get back to this build. Thank you, Skillshare. So here's the hot tip. You wanna start with your outside lines and then you can come back in and quickly remove the middle. So you can see here, I'm lining up my square. I got my saw blade curve right on the inside. And if you leave the line, you'll have something to work to. Now this is the fun part. Everyone loves breaking out all this material. So if you wanted to, you could just put these blocks in on the one side, but you still have to knock out this side. Essentially what ended up happening was as I removed that, it ended up being the exact width of the two by material that we're using our glue up. So it just broke right there at the seam. Oh, I need a longer clamp. All right, so next thing we need to do is cut all of our cross pieces. They're all the same length. I need 10 of them. So I'm gonna batch cut these. You see framers do stuff like this. I'm not a framer, I just play a carpenter on the internet. So kind of same thing here. And I'll come back to the other side. I think that's my last cut. Nope, I have to cut the tops. Ah! I'm on the floor, I hate it. But I'll do it for you guys, because I love you. This is my wood shop I can't use. We don't have power to a single thing. Now I'm going to glue and screw the leg assembly together, and this should go pretty quick, because this is like the most basic of designs. This joinery method here is super sturdy, and can also be used in like regular furniture projects. A lot of people really like the look of a lap joint, Sam and I being two of those people. So it's a pretty good skill builder if you're looking to get a little better at your joiner. Holy shit, John, it's a table. Almost. It looks like a, like a farm stall. Most of my projects look like a farm stall. Yeah. Actually, that's what we're gonna call this place. The farm, farm stall. Farm stall. I was thinking of calling it HQ because that sounds cool as hell. Yeah, but that's still not original. Farm stall. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is put cross pieces in for strength. It's gonna be easier to lay them out like this. So I'm gonna find the middle, which is 48 inches. The middle of that is 24, 24 inches. inches. Come on, Jordan. Point you were valedictorian. Point out Sam. You were the fakest valedictorian in the history of valedictorian. That works here. We know you can barely read. That's actually a job requirement to work with. Barely read? Yeah. yeah. Because indentured servitude is illegal. <laughs> okay, so to speed things up now, I'm gonna get my screws in there first, and then I can just bang, bang all the cross members in. I personally like to have screw placement if I'm gonna use them and expose them. Kind of uniform. So I use a line. I know lines are hard, but you can try. Jordan, may I? Poop, poop, go, yeah. So we've got our tops here, our MDF. That's medium density fiberboard for those of you that were curious on what it stood for. I gotta cut out some notches for the bottom and then we should be able to tilt this sucker sideways and get it in there. If not, I'll have to cut it in half and then re-stick her back. Let's see. Three shorter screws, like a glove. You know what it is, kids? MDF comes 49 by 97. Pull back at. <laughs> That's how I wanted it. I planned it that way. I'll buff out. <laughs> so glad you're the one that did it. You made the <laughs> correct move. Not standing on that. I don't think I like the glove Jordan. I bought these the other day. I was like, I don't know if I should have bought these. So glad I have. They're so comfy and warm, and my hands they are- They look just... so worn in already. Yeah, this is from two days of moving. So, I got these casters on the Amazon that are on the outside. So that way the table can sit down when we want it to. So these will make it nice to roll this sucker around, be awesome, perhaps go practice our surfing, because Jordan really wants to get into that. A lot of big surf here in Pennsylvania. I actually have been surfing. Of course you have, you're a pilot, girl scout, professional skier. I can't wait till we try to move this with shit on it and it all rolls off. Roll! And rules. Sweet. Oh yeah.
And there you have it, a four by eight rolling workbench that I did in three hours-ish with only three power tools. Super easy, basic build that you should definitely try at home. If you're interested, we've got a plan available as well as we are looking for suggestions for more basic projects like this because we love you in so much. We've got the space. Let's make some awesome stuff. If you want to see more shop projects, I've got a whole playlist right here.